everybody, welcome to day six of the ECG marathon where we're going to do 30 topics in 30 days and progress through the entire cardiac axis. Today is a fun video in the second video in our series of AB blocks, specifically our second video of second degree AB blocks. And today we're going to be going over a second degree type 2 AB block. Remember that, just so that we refresh our memory, we look at AV blocks specifically looking at the relationship between a P wave and a QRS, because we know that these sinus P waves that fire off depolarize the atria here in blue, creating our P wave. We know that the AV node, the AV junction, captures that signal, delays it, and then sends it down through our ventricular fibers to create our QRS. And the time and spatial relationship between the P wave and the QRS is represented by this AV junction. We learned that first degree blocks, second degree blocks, and third degree AV blocks are the way that we classify these AV blocks. First degree being that every P wave conducts to a QRS complex. It just takes longer than we expect it to. Second degree block is where some P's generate a QRS complex, but not all P waves. And that just tells me that not every P that's heading down is going to generate a QRS. It tells me that there is intermittent block at the AV junction. And then lastly, in a third degree heart block, which will be the topic uh, here in the near future, we have no P waves will go to a QRS complex. And so they behave independently. We'll talk about that another time. Yesterday we talked about the second degree type 1 AV block. So if you haven't seen that one, go check that video out too. But today we're going to talk about the second degree type 2 AV block. Remember that the second degree AV blocks are the most vague type of AV block, meaning that we have to recognize in what fashion do some but not all P waves conduct to that QRS complex. And so if I zoom in on our AV junction here, and let me just erase all this, if I zoom in to the AV junction, we can better understand that. So here we've got our AV junction. The AV junction, the AV junction, this is the region, the one-way highway. It's a one-lane highway. It's the only place that signal can get from the atria to the ventricles. It's the only place. And so all of our AV blocks occur here. Yesterday we talked about the second degree type 1 being something that is demonstrating decremental conduction, meaning that the PR interval is getting longer and longer and longer until it drops. We said that second degree type 1 blocks are blocks to the AV node proper. That's our AV node proper because the AV node is the node that slows our signal down. And so when the AV node itself gets a little bit more diseased, it slows it down too much after every single beat until it drops and then it resets. So we get PR interval lengthening, 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 drop. So that's the first uh, of two different regions within the AV junction. There's the AV node proper, and then just beneath it, here I'll do it in green, is the bundle of Hiss. It's our Hiss bundle. And so the Hiss bundle is the area of interest of today's video. The Hiss bundle, let me write it in a different color, because that one was a little rough. The Hiss bundle is where second degree type 2 AV blocks occur, specifically. And the Hiss bundle demonstrates a behavior that is different than the AV node. It's something called all or nothing conduction. All or nothing conduction means it either conducts the signal or it doesn't. There is no in between. What that means is that if there's a block at the level of the Hiss bundle, we're not going to see it take longer. It's either going to happen or it's not. And so imagine if there is an intermittent block here at this level, we'll do it in blue, where we have a block there at the Hiss bundle then what can happen if that block doesn't block every single P wave, but it only blocks some of them, then we will see a pattern where the PR interval stays the same until it drops. So that's all or nothing. So what this means is that 
when the P wave is conducted to the QRS, it's conducted normally, and there's no in between. It's either it goes or it doesn't go. And so we're going to take a look at how this EKG represents a second degree type 2 AB block. And at the end of this video, we're going to put it all together and we're going to recognize why it's different to have a second degree type 1 and a second degree type 2 block from a prognosis standpoint. It's going to be really interesting. So if we take a look here at this EKG, there's a lot more going on than just a second degree type 2 AV block, but we're just going to focus on the rhythm today. We're not going to focus on the entirety of all 12 of the leads. I'm going to zoom in maybe down here to lead 2. And what I'm going to notice is that I've got these QRS complexes that are not so regular. right? You see, every now and again, you've got QRS complexes that right here kind of beat at a regular pattern right here, beat a regular pattern, and then it slows down drastically here. So when I see intermittent periods of, of rapid slowing and rapidly speeding up, it's very contrast, there's not a ramp up and a ramp down, I wonder, I wonder if there's an AV block. So I look more closely at the atrial activity. Is the atrial activity driving this rhythm? And if I zoom in, I see I've got some P waves, and those P waves appear to be conducting to these QRSs. And when I look at this gap here in between, I look and I notice, huh, there's a P wave right here. There's a P wave right there, but there's no QRS complex. So this P wave was blocked at the level of the AV node, right? If the P wave occurs, it tells me that the atria depolarized. If the AV node doesn't give the ventricles that signal, then that's a blocked beat. And then I notice here, there's a P wave that conducts to the QRS. And then I notice there's another P wave that's blocked. And so I'm trying to figure out what type of AV block is this because what I'm noticing is that some P waves, some P waves, but not all P waves are conducted to a QRS complex. So I know I have a second degree AV block. Now I need to determine, is it a second degree type one AV block? Is it a second degree type one or is it a second degree type 2 AV block because we said that these two types of AV blocks correlate to different anatomical features. So I know that I can look at the PR intervals and, and specifically look at multiple consecutive PR intervals that occur before a drop. So I zoom in here and I notice that there are three sets of P waves that conduct to a QRS. One, two, three, and then we have a P wave that's blocked. And so what I can do is I can measure the PR interval before them, and I can say, okay, this PR interval is roughly, uh, I don't know, we'll just call that five little boxes, 200 milliseconds. This next PR interval is 200 milliseconds. The next PR interval is 200 milliseconds. And then we have this block. So what I'm seeing is that every time that a P wave is conducted to the QRS, like in beat number one, beat number two, and beat number three, it conducts with the exact same PR interval, meaning that the AV node functions at the exact same rate or function. Then you notice it blocks. So I would say this is a really good example of all or nothing conduction, meaning that it either works or it doesn't. And then you see it picks right back up where we started, where this P wave is conducted to that QRS complex. So this is a really good example of a second degree type two AV block because we are witnessing all or nothing conduction, and that tells me that the block is at the level of the His bundle. So that's why we see type 2s and type 1s requiring differentiation on an EKG. From a prognosis standpoint, I think this is what's really interesting. We're going to get into escape beats in the future, but escape beats are the reason why we care about this. Because imagine this. Somebody has an AV block, right? They have either a first second or a third degree AV block. Obviously, a third degree is bad. 
We know that third degree is bad. Sound the alarm. This person's got a complete heart block. That's not good. We'll go over that in the future. But what happens is when someone has a second degree AV block, I worry. And why do I worry? Well, obviously their AV junction is disease. And I want to, one, stop that disease from progressing. But two, what happens if that disease process continues to wear down on the AV junction? And what happens next? That second degree well, has nowhere to go but to become a third degree AV block. So what happens when we have a third degree AV block? Well, we need to rely on an escape rhythm to beat within the ventricles. And so imagine this. Zoom in here. I have a second degree type 1 AV block. We said second degree type 1 AV blocks are blocks at the AV node itself, which is right here in red, right? It's right there in red. If that is the localization of my second degree type 1 AV block, if whatever process is diseasing that node progresses from a second degree to third degree, we're going to get complete block where? At the level of the AV node. And in that case, we will still have a healthy His bundle just beneath it, right? That His bundle just beneath will be healthy. And so my His bundle is where I can generate something called an escape rhythm. So in a second degree type 1 AV block, if the AV node progresses to a third degree block, I still know that I have a healthy His bundle just beneath it to create a meaningful junctional escape rhythm. And those escape rhythms usually occur at 40 to 60 beats per minute. It's not very fast, but it's fast enough to keep our brain perfused, our kidneys perfused, our heart perfused, all the really important organs, our lungs, so that we can exchange gases. Right? It's really important. Okay, contrast that to a type 2 second degree block, right? So second degree type 2 block. This is a block at the level of the His bundle. So imagine if I redraw that here in blue, if that block turns from a second degree to a third degree AV block, whatever process is there progresses from a second to third degree block, now we have complete blockade at the level of the His bundle. So now we rely on that escape rhythm again. We rely on another escape rhythm to beat the ventricles but we cannot produce a junctional escape rhythm because the junction is blocked completely. The most inferior portion of the junction is blocked, and so no signal is going to get down. So this escape rhythm will be a ventricular escape rhythm, right? Somewhere within the ventricles. And we know the ventricular escapes usually occur at a slower rate, between 20 and 40 beats per minute. And that escape rhythm, in this case, might not be enough to perfuse our brain. Remember, our brain only needs five minutes of ischemia to really be in a bad way permanently. It's not going to be really great to perfuse our heart. It's not going to be great to perfuse the other vital organs of our body, and we can, you know, die pretty quick. So that is why you'll notice second degree type 1 versus type 2 AV blocks. Uh, the decision-making branching point there is very important. So people with secondary type 2 AV blocks require an urgent implantation of a permanent pacemaker. Secondary type 1 AV blocks need to be evaluated further to determine the cause of that type 1 AV block. This the type 2s definitely need that evaluation as well, but the type 1s can be caused by medications, um, be caused by sleepiness, uh, sedatives, youthfulness, like even just like being healthy. So Obviously, not all secondary type 1s are really bad, but that is incredibly situational dependent. Secondary type 2, you should be worried. So, review of what exactly we should expect to see in a second degree type 2 AV block. We said it's at the level of the His bundle, which has this all or nothing conduction. And so, what does that mean? That means that our PR interval will be fixed meaning our, all of the times that a P conducts to a QRS will be done in the same fashion. But when it blocks, it's blocked. And so that is different from a type 1, and that is why we identify that on the EKG. So I hope that this helps. I hope that uh, understanding the anatomical differences between a type 1 and a type 2 is helpful, at least from a, um, a prognosis standpoint and from a little bit of a treatment standpoint. 
Um, this is all situational dependent when we think of acute treatment. And so I don't want you guys to memorize that uh, in itself, but I really want you to understand the general concept as of why. So if you have questions about this, do me a favor and put them in the comments because I promise you that other people are gonna have those same questions and they're gonna learn from you and we're gonna learn together. Um, otherwise, thanks so much for being here. Um, really excited to do these 30 days together and I'll see you tomorrow on the next EKG video. Take care.